Welcome everyone. Good morning, good evening, good, good afternoon, wherever you are, to this demo session on S4 HANA developers training with ABAP on HANA. It's been an amazing journey learning these ABAP on HANA come S4 HANA concepts. On my YouTube channel, there are so many subscribers and visitors every single day who are asking me, Anuba, when are you starting the next batch on S4 HANA? We would like to be part of this journey. And here we are today, the next demo session on S4 HANA, along with ABAP on HANA training. In this evening, in this session, we will go ahead and have a quick look at the capabilities of ABAP on HANA, including S4 HANA, and what is that you are expected to do in next couple of months and years coming forward ahead of your career as part of these new technologies. So you need to understand what you will be learning throughout this course. The very first thing, I will give you just a brief about it. Of course, you can find the detailed course content about this course on anuboutrainings.com. But let me just quickly brief you about what is that you will be doing in a nutshell in a couple of days, upcoming days of, of this training. So we will be exploring, unleashing the potential of in-memory computing engine, nothing but your HANA database. There is zero prerequisite in order to learn this course in terms of HANA. So if you have never ever experienced SAP HANA or never ever seen SAP HANA, just heard about it or even never heard about it, don't worry. There is no prerequisite for you to learn HANA before this course starts. Actually, we will cover SAP HANA as part of this course itself for you. The second phase, we will plan our move, as you can see, uh, a move towards uh, the SAP latest ERP, which is S4. So what is that as a developer I'm supposed to do in my company when my company decides to move to S4? Or not just S4, maybe they are just plugging out the Oracle DB or a DB6 and plugging in the in-memory database called SAP HANA. So what is that I supposed to do in my company to be able to perform well with this new dimension or new technology? The third phase, we will discuss about innovation, innovation in terms of new dimension applications or new dimension techniques. How do you consume the data right from the HANA box into the ABAP layer? Those who come from the typical VW background, this is going to be very interesting for them as well because that's where you use to create your data models and then finally you use to consume them in the BACS reports. So that's where even for them, it is also very, very helpful. We will look at how can you boost up the performance of your existing ERP applications. You might have written thousands of lines of code over the years in your company, the custom code. Now there are two challenges. The first challenge is moving this custom code to S4. And the second challenge is how do you optimize this custom code to so that your company can take best leverage of this in-memory computing engine called HANA. We will be learning these techniques, so-called code to data paradigm, by also learning adoption of our custom code to code to data paradigm with these new techniques and new syntax and new frameworks. So basically we have three different pillars here, new, new techniques like CDS views, AMDPs, proxy objects and stuff like that. New frameworks like integrated data access with ALV, fuzzy search, fault tolerant search with HANA, and then new syntax with SAP NetWeaver 7.4 and 7.5, the new above syntax was introduced. We'll be having some glimpse of that as well. Along with a lot of tooling in terms of code inspector, ADC checks, what has been improved there, and what are all the different tools to measure the performance of your custom code in the today's world. Finally, last but not the least, end-to-end -end scenarios with S4 building completely new dimension application, utilizing the concepts of CDS views, annotations, OData services, Fiori user experience, Fiori elements, DOPF CDS integration, hierarchy CDS integration, and all that new stuff will be together complementing this entire course. We will have four end-to-end -end real time scenarios, including OIA scenario, transactional app scenario, a dashboard, IDOC dashboard scenario, and a hierarchical CDS scenario as part of this course. Now coming to the next question, who is this course for? Am I, am I eligible for this course? What exactly the skill set required to learn this course? To be very honest with me, you just need basic SAP knowledge. And also, a, it, it's good always if you have a basic ABAP knowledge also, because some part of this course 
co focus completely on ABAP programming, like new ABAP syntax, ABAP tooling and stuff like that. Of course, if you are not an ABAP developer, do you think that this course is not for you? Absolutely not. This course is also applicable even you are non ABAP or you come from a BW background or you come from a UX background, a UI background. All together, these are all new stuff. There's a lot of new stuff, even that those are completely new for ABAP developers as well. So you are as equal as ABAP developers when you're joining this course. Of course, some part of the course focus on some of the ABAP specific areas. So I would say about 20 to 25 percent of it yet is still the 75 to 80 percent of the part is completely new even for ABAP developers. You got to make a smart move to stay relevant today in your company. It is designed for developers. Of course, my first priority will be developers, the people who love coding, people who love to learn new things, people who love to try out new things, architects, those who are willing to become an architect or already as associate architect want to become an architect or are architects. But you see there's a shift in the paradigm, shift in the technology moving towards most of the S4 solutions. What do I do to update myself? Solution experts, BW consultants, because you're seeing not too much opportunities now on the BW side. And also, of course, any kind of technical consultant coming from BW, Portal, CRM, SRM, any of the background you are coming from technical background this course is definitely definitely relevant for you and it's going to give you great value going ahead in your career there are there are hundreds of them who have taken benefit out of this course and i'm sure this will equally be benefiting you as well in the future so what will you see in next 40 minutes as part of this demo session let's have a quick glimpse of that so we will be designing a quick demo in this we will be first creating a cds view just will be understanding the basics and you know we'll be showing you in the system a live demo with all the stuff in step number two we will be creating a service to expose the data out of that CDS in step number two and then in the last step we will be building a Fiori app at front of all of you in next 40 minutes a complete end-to-end -end. of course don't consider this as complete course but I will just show you a glimpse so that you can get a, some basic idea about what's going on out there and what kind of new solutions is your company going to expect or are expecting from you today in this new technology world? So let's get started with our demo session. So I'll, we all are aware for, for this three-tier architecture, so-called R3 architecture. And if you really look at, once again, this three-tier architecture starts with the presentation layer. And in the middle, we have the, the middleware layer. That's why it's called middleware layer because it sits in the middle. And finally, at the bottom, we have the database layer. So this one is your presentation layer, so-called in the three-tier architecture, so typically your SAP GUI, and then you have the application layer, which is nothing but your basis or so-called NatWeaver-based platform, where you allow to execute your ABAP code and also uh, the different varieties of ERP applications. And then finally comes is your database layer. That's your three-tier architecture. Now, over the period of time, guys, this three-tier architecture has evolved very fast. What is exactly changed or what is in, indeed changing in this architecture? All these three layers are evolving. So the very first change will start from the foundation of the building. You will see the database layer earlier. You can plug any kind of data. Most prefer preferably, your company was using either an IBM DB2 or an Oracle DB or a Max DB, which is which was also an SAP database. But most of these systems are so-called RDBMS system, relational database management systems. They tend to keep all the data in the hard disk. And whenever you store the data in the hard disk, in order to process that, you got to first bring your data from hard disk to the RAM, and then from the RAM to the computer's heart, which is so-called the CPU. So ultimate processing is, is dependent on how fast you can fetch this data from hard disk to RAM and RAM to the processor in, in its, its CPU registers to compute the data, compute the calculations. So the main bottleneck for the data movement was between the hard disk and the RAM because the memory cost was very expensive. So what SAP have come up with in year around 2012, 13 kind of time, we will also look at the history of, uh, of this in-memory computing engine. So they have come up with another database so-called an in-memory database, and now that is replacing your RDBMS system. So this is now called in-memory database. And yes, you are guessing it right. It's nothing but your HANA. 
HANA stands for High Performance Analytical Appliance. So this is what was the emergence of HANA. The main essence or the main backbone of HANA is keeping the data in the RAM. So that's where you remove the bottleneck of transferring this data from hard disk to the RAM. Hence, you get natural performance improvement. Of course, there are a lot more aspects and factors which has contributed to this overall performance improvement. But yes, these are some of the major ones like compression, column store. We will be discussing, by the way, all of these things during our course. And we'll be also talking about in context of interview what people can ask you when you're attending any interview on HANA or maybe on, on ABAP on HANA or Suite on HANA or S4 HANA. So as a developer, what do they expect from you and what will they ask you? That is what we will be learning throughout this course as well. So that is what the first change which was in the foundation layer, which has now replacing quickly with SAP HANA. Then also, not just that, also the, the middleware layer, so-called your NetWeaver layer was also evolved. SAP NetWeaver, starting with version 7.2, 7.1, it has evolved to 7.5x. So current latest version is 7.5x, which means 7.51, 52, and 53 is the one which they have it at this point. Now, this evolution has brought in a lot of new capabilities, capabilities like contacting this in-memory database in a much efficient manner and also allowing you to do things which you could not do it in the past. For example, I remember the time when I built my first TLV report and there were kind of 60,000 records in my table and in order to fetch those number of records, I got to wait kind of a lot of time and sometimes my dialogue work process comes, comes, at, comes to a timeout. These complicated reports and applications which I need to run, I need to at times run them on the background jobs because they used to tend to take a lot of time and that was really a, a kind of performance nightmare for me as a developer. So with SAP HANA, it's also now possible to run NetWeaver on HANA, which means that becomes an ABAP on HANA layer. And this is what giving you the new possibilities to design solutions, which can give you a blazing fast performance. On top of it, the biggest change from the user point of view has happened on this layer. This is I love the most, you know, and that's where my UI5 and Fury technology comes into the picture. As you can see here, this layer has been changed and now slowly, slowly moving to the browser and not just browser, but your mobile device. And that's where the Fury user experience was introduced in the, in the front end layer. That was the biggest change from the end user point of view. Probably the other changes are transparent for the end user. As a developer, it makes more sense for me, but from the end user point of view, this was the biggest change which the users will see. So now the idea is how do you utilize this full stack, complete end-to-end -end stack to be able to develop new types of solutions, port your existing solutions to this new type of environment. What is that you should do or should not do to be able to grasp the best out of this system, squeeze the best performance out of it. So the main idea behind or the, the intention behind is to achieve something called a code to data paradigm. So earlier in the past, what used to happen, majority of the logic you used to write in your application layer. Remember the first report which you wrote in your life? It was more, more like select star from S flight table into a in, into table ITAB, an internal table in a BOP program, and then you loop at ITAB to do all that blah blah operations and then process the data and then finally present it in form of a list to your end users, maybe a ALV report or a, or a list report or an interactive report. That was my first program, by the way. And similarly, I hope your start was also similarly on the same fashion. So that's where you had all the processing logic most of the time were being carried out on the application layer. You fetch all the all the bunch of data which you really need, even you don't need, you got to fetch everything. And then after fetching everything, you are processing that data here through the internal tables, structures, uh, field symbols, and you know your field structures, your uh, whatsoever data types above offers and supports, you were actually doing it here on the application layer. This is what you were actually doing it. But since now you see we have the data with, with more powerful uh, engine, so-called HANA, it's possible to kind of push down this logic into database. So basically what you used to do on ABAP side is now is shifting slowly to the HANA side. And that's where the pyramid is, I would say this pyramid is going to get flipped. So let's flip this pyramid. And what you will get when you flip this pyramid is nothing but code to data paradigm, which means 
now more and more processing logic is being carried out in the database what is the advantage of this approach instead of this approach what is the advantage of this new approach the advantage of this approach is first advantage you don't have to transfer a large volume of data from the database layer to application layer you don't need to you only need to transfer only the final result which you want to see for example if i want to calculate the total amount of sales order pertaining to us region i don't got to go to database and say hey database give me all the us sales orders and then i'm going to looping them and then calculating the total on the application layer i would straight away go to the database and say hey can you please give me uh, get me the total sum of sales in the us area and that's what hana does pretty well it's designed for it doing the aggregations on fly the second ma major advantage is memory footprint has been reduced over a period of time because the way hana stores the data is different from the typical rdbms system of course there are more advantages we'll be discussing in our unit number one where we will inter introduce and in uh, learn about this this layer so called hana and the second major advantage was since your data lies in the database it's it's very easy and quick to process the data within this layer here itself you don't have to really do you know all the transfer of data to different layer and then do all the processing and call back and forth the database layer hey you missed out this part can you give it to me and all that kind of back and forth processing is kind of eliminated as a result of that you get a great performance out of the system so this was one one major paradigm shift the way we program um, or where the way we develop anything in in this shift and that's where the contribution uh, comes from these new techniques like cdsv which is the most talked about technique that's why you all are here to attend this demo session because your main intention to is to understand and learn this cdsv chapter all right so this is one shift and on the other side if you look at the the experience from the end user point of view end users also become more smarter they are now want to consume applications on mobile devices or while they are on the go they don't want to see the, the conventional typical erp screens they don't want to wait for a long time to load data they want to really do things quicker there there are new innovations in the area of conversational ais there are uh, machine learning artificial intelligence iot scenarios where sensor data has been picked up and a whole bunch of new stuff uh, which is coming up on the front end side which is changing the way user is perceiving your application so it's quite quite important as a developer for me myself to stay up to date in this new arena or in this new space of technology so that's the main broad essence so now what we are going to do as i just mentioned in our demo session we will just quickly go ahead and create our 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 data picking logic basically the logic to pull the data from an erp system so we'll, we'll take a sample data example and we'll pick the data from a sample data table which i will be showing it to you in a minute and we will be building something called a very simple cdsv out there and then next step we will be exposing this data to 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 the fiori app but fiori app only understands something so called an o data so don't panic if you don't know what is o data don't panic if you don't know cdsv just a demo session as and when we will progress in our live classes i will be explaining each and every single bit of it in the detail explaining you the essence explaining you the technology explaining you the reason behind every single bit of it and then that's the way you will learn it you know my style of teaching as you can see also on youtube many demo sessions i am not a believer of copy paste of code we don't copy paste a line single line of code during our classes no matter what time it takes we write every single line of code in the system so that you get the best out of it we will focus on every single bit of concepts i will and i will consider you as completely new to this area so no matter even some of you would have probably experienced s4 hana or maybe working on s4 or maybe working on cds concept doesn't matter for me for me all of you will be equal and you all will be treated with equality at the same time i would consider that i would make this training design in such a way that even there is something always for somebody whether you are an experience or intermediate or, or a beginner so that will be something you would definitely find interesting in this training for all category of people all right so let's get started what is our use case create a cds view so first of all let's understand quickly what is cds this term we hear a lot yeah and it's kind of everywhere so what is cds let's understand what is cds stands for cds stands for core data services 
it is an extension of SQL. I'm sure all of you know SQL. SQL like select queries, insert, update, delete, SQL, right? So it's an extension of SQL. Now when we say it's an extension of SQL, what has been extended? You can ask a fair question. Of course, I'm saying it's an extension of SQL, which means there's something similar to what it can do. Now can you explain what is that extended? So basically it allows you to do DDL, so-called data definition language, which includes commands like create. If you are very familiar with SQL programming or ever you did SQL in your life, then you must aware of create table command, create alter, drop. These are all the DD commands which we use, data dictionary commands or database commands we use to create, delete, manage basically our database objects. So using CDS, it's a myth. Many times people say CDS is only to pull the data. No, it's a myth. CDS can also be used to define new data structures. You can create data structures. You can create database tables. Yes, DDL, data definition language. We'll see some glimpse of it soon. The second thing comes is DQL, data query language. This is, by the way, the most popular variant of uh, or most popular use case of, of the CDS concept. So-called your CDS view comes here. So as you all know, the word view means the data, virtual data. Basically, it allows you to view the data. It, it, it doesn't typically um, create new objects, rather just query the data, which is which is spread across multiple database tables. So CDS views is basically comes under this data query language category. That's where it is used. Now, together with this flavor, there are more powerful concepts. What, what makes it so special? The science behind this concept is actually something called semantically rich data model. Plus, together with that, we also have concept of expression language. So this is what makes this concept so special. When we will go to this chapter, we will also look at comparison, why the CDS view is needed. Because you may say, Anubhav, already we have so many views in SE 11 like database view, projection view, help view, and, and you know maintenance view. Why would we need now this new concept, once again, so-called CDS view? What is the essence of it? Why, 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 why you should learn? So that's what we will be answering during our chapter number 12, when we will talk about CDS view concepts more in detail. Just wanted to give you a quick overview, guys, so that you can understand what we will be doing in this demo session. Next comes to the DCL, data control language, my favorite. So you're going to expose the data of your company outside, outside either via cloud or maybe in the, or the in the form of a services to the Fury apps. Now, that's where the important thing comes into picture is security. Who will secure this data? Would everybody be able to access all data everywhere? Probably not. Yeah. So you would want to apply kind of security mechanism by which you can secure the data. And that comes is your data control language. Okay, DCL, data control language. That's where we will talk about CDS security or CDS DCL concept. How do you secure the data? There are options like creating a DCL, patching up with a role, and then we have a concept of uh, authorization object, authority field, authorization class, all these concepts together. Uh, I will show it to you in the system live in action. How can you secure your data when you are exposing it via this, this so-called CDS view? So let's go to the system and see uh, quickly uh, creating a CDS view. So basically what I have is a very simple database table which you all can, no matter which area you come from, you can easily understand is just nothing but business partners. What is business partners? Business partners is nothing but somebody with whom you're doing business, either your customers or your suppliers, right? You're doing business with them. They all come falls under the category of business partners. So I have a very simple sample data table which is storing the data of a business partner. And this data I will be exposing via a CDS view. So we will be creating a view on top of this business partner table. So that's what we will be doing. So in step number one, we will have a business partner table, which I will show it to you in the system. It will be a live demo in the system. So we'll have a sample data table just for demonstration purpose, a sample demo data. And then on top of it, we will be creating something called a CDS view. 
to expose this data and you will that that is the time you will see first glimpse of this semantically rich data model what I mean by that so basically we, we will have special symbols out here so called at the rate of symbol we call them annotations so these annotations are very popular and they are the responsible people for driving the functionality in this new world all right then next to that we will be creating a very simple application and guess what this application would run in mobile device also all right and that's what we call Fiori UX all right so that is what we will be doing now in order to do something you need tools suppose if I ask you to probably design a software you need computer you need programming languages you need different tools similarly to this new system which we are going to talk here it's going to be an s4 system of course and this system with which you want to talk you need tools to talk to just like in the past you know, this this application layer you use sap gui to connect similarly you would also need tools to talk to these this new system so we will be using here two different tools basically so one tool is for designing this the CDS view and another tool to design this this Fiori user experience probably you must have, might have already guessed it correct yes you're right the first tool we will be using here so called Eclipse tool supported with ABAP development tools on Eclipse ADT don't worry about what is ADT, what is Eclipse, how do we get it? The moment word Eclipse comes, people think that, okay, he started Java development. No, guys, Eclipse is just a development tool. You can develop anything, almost everything today on the Eclipse environment, be it an ABAP program, you can create probably a, an Android application, you can create a React.js application, you can create a Fiori application. It's, it, it offers a whole bunch of functionality, actually. It's just a development tool like SEAT. Okay, we will be seeing that. So don't uh, live in the myth of that Eclipse is used for Java, not at all. It's just a development tool. I'll show you some glimpse. And in our chapter number three in this course, we will learn the basics of Eclipse. We will learn how to set up Eclipse in your computer, how to get access to the system. All these things we will be learning in chapter number three more in detail. What is ADT, how to use ADT, how to set up, how to in connect to the system from ADT. Can I use my company system? Can I use your system? what are the possible system access options you have we will be learning all of that in chapter number three now coming to the the creation of Fioria for this I will be using another amazing tool which is also available in a free trial mode so called web IDE so we will be using these two tools to be able to uh, create these applications yeah so we will be doing that in a second all right so don't be overwhelmed at this point of time Anubo, how did you got this environment can i get this environment right away in my system don't worry it's a demo session i will be not leaving any stone unturned i will show you every single bit of it right from scratch understanding you as a beginner but please understand it's a demo session so we will be just looking at you know what kind of possible things which we can can drive out uh, by the end of this course so that that's a glimpse I will be showing it to you so this is something called Eclipse so called development environment ABAP development tools in Eclipse so I will switch to that and now you can see it's just starting up I will say launch my Eclipse environment so I've just uh, started that and I will maybe just to uh, make you more comfortable uh, those who come from above background I'll probably not straight away jump to this example rather I will jump to uh, first writing a simple ABAP Pro report about program I will show you first writing a simple about program first execute that about program and then I will sh then I will take you to the the demo scenario which we have it in the demo so as you can see it's starting up it's booting up my Eclipse this is the latest Eclipse version and guess what guys this is also free absolutely free we will learn this in chapter number number three how to set up Eclipse in your local computer in your local development environment all right that will, will be be definitely doing that so let me just okay let it start it's still booting up okay good it, it is it has started now so maybe just give me a moment let me just pass in my my secure secure key from my cheat sheet to to my logon system and that's when we will be able to start things up out here in the system environment so just give me a moment yeah looks good so now connected to my system as you can see here this is so-called Eclipse environment and if you look at this Eclipse environment carefully this gives you a feel of your transaction code like SE80 all right SE80 all of you yeah 
right exactly about development about devel uh, about uh, repository or so called about development uh, development repository so called SEAT which is your preferred option to whenever you want to develop something you always go to SEAT or SC11, SC24, SC38 all that transaction codes the most popular of them is about workbench SEAT so just like about SEAT on the left hand side you see a tree view this is where you will see all your development objects and on the right hand side you will see the content view where you can see all the content the programs the reports whatsoever code you got to write it you will write it on the on the right hand side so that's just exactly the same view between left and right you have it so don't be overwhelmed by this view and uh, now what i will do is this our system so i'm just going to go to the system right click here and create a new program so i'll say other about repository object and watch out guys here we will have an ABAP program so just search for ABAP and you see all the ABAP related objects are now available in Eclipse to be able to create and this I just put some name Z ETS and our trainings and I say November demo okay a smiley program As it's finish, oh my sorry, typo. Anyway, it's already gone to the system. I just say finish, and now it's gonna start a report. So what you used to do in SEAT, you can do it here now quickly. So let me just show you maybe a quick one. I would say right. I'll say, how were you doing? And just say dot. Of course, every of our program ends with a period. So we put a dot there, save this, a very simple hello world, hello, and I will say execute, F8, and now you would see your, uh, your result output, and you would see something nice, uh, SAP GUI-like screen, awesome, look at here, an SAP GUI-like screen, it has a well tight integration with SAP GUI, so somewhere, wherever it needs, it, it launches SAP GUI within my Eclipse environment, so you never be able to make a feel or, or a difference between this and that so it's just it's a seamless integration with SAP GUI what you have with with Eclipse here but anyway don't panic how did I got this environment as I mentioned we will be learning this in chapter number three now I will quickly jump straight away to create a CDS view then but before that I wanted to show you my database table where I have I've kept sample data before the demo so I will quickly go it there and the table name is SMWD underscore BPA this is a database table in my system and I'm sure you can find this table in your system as well, your company system, as long as you are above NetWeaver 7.4. So I just open this up. And the first glimpse you will see, oh my God, this table has opened in a different way. I don't see it uh, like a GUI editor, right? So this looks a little different. Yes, guys, this is your CDS syntax to create the table. So now here system is showing you a CDS syntax, CDS-like syntax to create the database table of course it's already created in the system it's a standard table but i would want to just look at the data so i press f8 and now i can see some demo data out here remember this is just for demo purpose it's just a demo data there is no productive data here i'm not going to show you for some productive data even it's a demo system so there's no productive data as such it's just a demo data now that's cool so this is the table i'm going to use and we will now build a cds view on this on top of this table so very easy one just right click here and i say new other about repository object and i'll search for core data services as i mentioned the cds full form and we'll create a data definition say next let's give some name z ets underscore cds november demo for cds view so basically I'm just creating a view to expose this data outside my system uh, fury application now I'll just choose define view say finish and now this will start creating me my first view awesome and now guys hey hey there you go your friends are here these are your at the rate of this is something which is different than the normal views which you see in SE 11 so this is what I was talking about semantically rich data model okay so that, that's what makes it makes it so special and I will also show you the use of one of such one of such annotations which will which is going to help you now I will go to the top and put a SQL view name here 
So basically, whenever you activate a CDS view, it generates two artifacts at runtime. Well, first one will go to HANA DB and creates a view. Second one will be a DDIC view which will get created. So now the first thing which I need to do is tell, uh, tell the name of a, a DDIC view here uh, at this point of time. And this is what will be created automatically the moment I activate. Okay, that's what will happen. Um, okay, so this is what will be interesting for us. All right, so now we will give some name. So let me give some name, uh, ZETS CDS or ZETS CDS now. And that's my DDIC view name will be when it, when it creates. So maybe at the same time, I will also open our classical GUI session. And in this GUI session, I will show you whether uh, there is a view already exist with this name or not, or is it, I'm doing a real stuff at front of you in the system or not. So that's what I wanted to also showcase you. So let me go back and copy this name and go to SE11. And there you go to the view, put it here and say display. Voila, what you see is it does not exist right now. Super, that's fine, cool. Okay, now go back. So that's the name it is going to create after I activate. Right now, not activated. So that's the reason it's not existing. Now we will put our data source name here. Okay, so let's put our data source name, our database table. And now you can come down in this curly braces. You will be writing the, you will be writing the fields which you want to select from this database table. Now guys, this is completely new for all the people who come from either ABAP background or non-ABAP background. So many of you who also come from BW background want to join this course because you wanted to now see how the how the things are happening with respect to S4. What what can we create? Because many many of you been asked now to create CDS views instead of those typical BACS reports, uh, instead of uh, BACS reports or something else in the SAP system. Now they are on S4 and they want you to create CDS view for analytics purpose. So that's why you were also willing to learn this CDS. So remember, this is something which is new both for ABAP and non-ABAP developers. I'm sure those who come from ABAP background, you might not have seen this kind of code ever. In the past, it's not ABAP. It's a new type of syntax, a new type of object which has been introduced uh, with ABAP on HANA. So now I, I will just go inside and do control space out here, and you can see control space gives me a code completion. I can choose the fields which I would like to be part of my CDS, so maybe I will go ahead and just select insert all elements and voila, it generates all the elements out here. Now I can decide quickly to drop out some of them, just remove them and just keep only few of them out here. Just keep this much. And now you have this as my primary key, uh, basically from the database table and same I'm preserving, all right, I'm preserving the same key and then I will also say, okay, these are all the other fields, I want to keep it. Uh, to expose my data outside. I will activate this. And guess what? I just mentioned that when we activate, what happens? Our DD view gets created behind the scene with this name. I copy this name, go back to SEPQI session, and now let me just type in over here. And wow, there you go. It has created this, this DD view out of the CDS view which we just created in ADT. Remember one important funda fox here, that CDS views can only be created or updated or changed or developed in ADT. You cannot use SAP GUI to change these views. Uh, just a quick evidence of that. If you just try to change it here, it will give you an error. Okay, that's, that's something very interesting about CDS view. Um, that's you cannot change it. Of course, there are a lot more interesting facts in there in the system. We will be learning all of them in, the, in our classes. And I will also make sure that every single view on one of you qualify every single round of interview which you face in coming coming months. All right, let's come back. Now that's our view. It has been created and activated. I can quickly do a data preview here. So it's just press F8, F8 and wow, there you go. That's my data coming out of my database table straight away. And that's what is completely visible to us out here. But hey, hey, what does my Fiori app wants? My Fiori app, if I want to at all build an app, that app needs a service. And guess what? You can create the, generate the service from here itself uh, by exposing 
this CDS data to an O data service. Just a quick introduction. Of course, there will be a dedicated sessions also uh, on, on O data introduction, but just to give you a quick glimpse, what is O data? O data stands for Open Data Protocol. It is in layman terms, in simple words, if I want to show, it is used to expose data over HTTP using REST principles. All right. So that's what it is. Basically, you are going to expose your data through a URL. A URL will get created when you create the data. So in order to create the OData service out of this CDS view, we can again utilize this semantically rich data model. And there is SAP is offering uh, another annotation here, which you can use to expose an OData out of a CDS view. So in terms of steps, there are only two steps which you have to carry out to expose this data of a CDS to an to an OData service. The step number one will be just add an annotation called OData publish annotation. And then in the next step number two, what you just got to do is go back and go ahead and create the service. So basically system will generate a service definition. You need to create something called service exposition or you need to register the service, create the registration of the service, um, which is the next activity we have to do. I'll show it in the system Create the registration of the service. Now that second step will be carried out using a special transaction code slash and slash IWFND slash main service transaction. We will also learn the essence behind all of these steps in detail in our chapter number 11. I'm going to save this up and let's go back and let me just step number one add the rate of O data and guys guess what there is a nice code completion which is available just do control space and it shows you all the available annotations here at this level of the CDS. That's the power of this editor. Okay, so all the possible annotations are available here. So the one which I'm interested is to expose the OData. So choose OData dot publish and true. Awesome. Of course, it needs a reactivation. Let's reactivate. And now guess what? What will you see here is this red. Okay, gone. And now this turns out to be a warning. The warning clearly tells me that, hey, I have created an OData definition for you but you cannot use it right now until you register it, which is our step number two. So now if I just hover my mouse, it will also tell me the name of the service which it has just defined automatically. So all the necessary code is generated behind the scene just by putting this annotation. System is so smart. It's a smart system now. It understand what I mean to say when I say OData expose. It has created me an out of the box OData service. I just need to activate this service. So I'll copy this service name from here. And the typical service name will be same name as your CDS view name underscore CDS. So if you see really here, please request you to mute your line. Thank you. Okay, so now what system has done, system has created here ZATS CDS nov underscore CDS. So it's basically the CDS view name underscore CDS. That will be the name of the service which it creates. I am going to copy this, copy, copy, and straight away go to transaction code IWFND main service. So let me just press control six. I will teach you the shortcuts in chapter number three for all the ADT options and make it slash n slash IWFND slash main service transaction. Don't panic. These things are new to you. I understand that it will take time to settle down. So it's just a demo. So just get some handholding of what we're going to do in coming days. All right. Just a demo. So we'll be learning these things more in detail in coming classes. Let me click on add service and just tell me yes, register in local system and then give the service name, press enter. And wow, that's my service. Let's pick it up and say add the selected service. I will just tell you the system, please add the selected 
service for me. That is what we will be doing. Okay. So this activity is being done. Now the moment it will register the service, it will ask me also a transport request. Okay. It will ask me a transport request. So what is a transport request? A transport request is nothing but with the help of that, I can also transfer this particular service to the quality system and subsequent production system. So let me click on add service. And you see it's if I put here a productive package and system is going to uh, put me in the transport request. It's going to put me in the transport request. But right now we are doing only the local development. Okay. We are only doing a local development guys. That's the reason we will uh, just keep it in a temp object. So let's keep it in temp object. Uh, Anubo, yeah, this is per Parmeshwaran. Uh, please Hello. hold on your questions. I will come to the questions towards the end. Yeah, yeah. because I'm unable to see the mo movement of the screen because you're, uh, no, no, the Okay, maybe you can check the demo video later on on the YouTube. We will be publishing also it on the YouTube. Okay, we will look at the, the connection quality maybe when we start our classes from tomorrow. All right, now it's complete. We are done. So it's registered. Let's go back to the previous step. And I will quickly search my generated or registered service quickly out here. So let's do that. I will filter. And let me put here external service name as my CDS service name. Search. Oh, wow. It's registered. And now immediately you will also observe here this green symbol, which clearly tells us that boss, the service is now successfully registered. Now just check it out in the action. Just click on browser and you would see this service will launch in my browser in my local computer. Awesome. That's your service name. Just to an additional information, a service includes something called an entity set. An entity set is the end point to access the data. So if I just quickly copy this, go it on the top and just wanted to access the data and press enter you would see all the data which I was exposing via my view is now available in form of a service which any application can consume. Okay, any application can consume this data actually. Okay, so let's go ahead and now build uh, our step number three. So step number two is complete. We have created a CDS view and we've exposed the data in service format. And now the step number three is building a Fiori UX. For that, we will switch to another development tool called WebID. Don't panic. Again, I repeat, it's a demo session. We will learn about how to set up these development environments in your local machine yourself. You will be able to do it by, by, by when we start the sessions, actually. So I will switch quickly to WebIDE. So this is my WebIDE. Don't worry. I will show you exactly step-by-step -step descriptions. So I will just go ahead and type my user ID password on WebIDE and just connect to that. So it's launching the, this WebIDE. Why it's called WebIDE? Integrated Development Environment which runs on the web browser. That's why it is called WebIDE. Awesome. So now it's connecting. There you go. It's loading up, booting up, and we will quickly go ahead and create a project okay so by the way i was just developing something here so let me close all of that and we will create a new project so i'll go to my workspace this is again a set kind of view where on the left side you will do your development of the project artifacts and on the right side you see the content area so let me right click say new i want to create a new project and what kind of project or app I want to create. I want to create a master detail Fiori application. How it looks like? It looks like something, this screenshot. You see, you must have seen this kind of apps in your company. Yes, exactly. That's how they built it. Use this option, say next. And now I will give a project name, ZETS S4 demo. And I'll say my first Fiori app. on S4 and let's give some namespace ETS demo description unaboutrainings.com 
and we will see next. Now comes the most interesting part, how do you want to expose the data? Which means this application which you are creating, where will it drive the data from? So we have to now choose the system which we have already added. Now those who are new, don't worry, we will explain this in detail, how to add connection of our system to your web IDE in your own system. Okay, for now I will choose this and now you see it has loaded all the list of services which are available in our system. The one which we want is we have developed it. Okay, the name of that was our CDS view name underscore CDS. Copy that and just search. Wow, it's available. I'm going to pick it up. Say next. Just choose my app type. It's going to be like a launchpad application which is going to register on a Fury launchpad. Launchpad is nothing but the center entry point for all the Fury apps. And then I will choose my sales or company name or maybe just business partner name and I say finish. Congratulations, you have successfully created your first S4 HANA app in just 30 minutes. Superb. So now let's, it's time in action to see this application. How does it look like? How does it run? I'm going to choose this up and say run. And now you see it's launching our first S4 HANA Fury app. Just in last 40 minutes, we are able to achieve it with some basics. It's asking my credentials. Let me just quickly pause my screen to fill in my credentials here. Just enter that. And there you go. You can see all the business partners are getting displayed here as part of our app. That's so amazing. Yeah, that's so amazing. That's your first Fiori app, guys. Awesome. Thanks to SAP CDS Views annotation concept and the development tools, the latest development tools which we are using. Remember, this was just a demo session to make you understand the techniques, the tools and giving you a glimpse of what we will be learning in coming days. Stay tuned for the classes. I will start the sessions right from tomorrow onwards. You can check the course content on our website. You can always get, get in touch with us on anubhavtrainings.com. With that, Anubhav signing out. Thank you so much. Have a nice day and goodbye.